Now, Fair.com is a startup in the car and rental space founded by True Car creator Scott Painter. The app allows customers to shop, get approved, and pay for their next car all on their phones. Bloomberg's Taylor Riggs caught up with Scott at the Goldman Sachs Housing and Retail Finance Conference to discuss the changing world of auto sales. Well, I think there's definitely a shift in how people are going to gain access to mobility. Still, the car market is booming. Um, you know, so far, at least the numbers would say that what we're seeing in terms of ride sharing does represent a shift in how people get access to mobility, but it does seem to be additive so far. And it turns out that even if somebody takes a, a ride share car, somebody needs to own that car, they need to maintain that car, keep it on the road. So we still think that there is a great argument for car ownership, but not individual car ownership is, is probably going to be a lot less um, sort of part of what big city life is about. So what does that mean for the traditional automakers like a GM or a Ford? Uh, do they still start to you know, make those cars because like you said, people need to own them or do they need to start to shift their business model? Well, I think the bigger shift for the automakers is really the impact of electrification and then also autonomy. And autonomy is going to have a big impact over time. But, you know, globally, we make about 80 million new cars every year. Um, on planet Earth, there's about 150 million used cars that are sold every year out of 1.5 billion non-autonomous, non non-electric cars. So there's a lot of activity in the new and used car, car markets globally. Tesla came out with some interesting news in the last few weeks and instead of um, working on more dealerships and their uh, retail centers, really going to direct to consumer. Yeah. Is that the future of this market? Well, I think it's really a reflection that Tesla has become a mature product. In the early days when you have a new car that nobody really understands or has seen before, it's really important that people can go and touch, feel, test drive that vehicle and get a product orientation. So really the early strategy at Tesla I think was very sound because people needed to get confidence in the product itself. And that really over time has shifted because most of those consumers that would go into those Tesla stores would make their purchase digitally. So all of that was already happening in a digital form. And those were really product orientation centers. And I think now that Tesla is a little bit more accepted, a little more mature, and the product is reliable, durable, the, the shift to online really does reflect that maturity. Now, as the founder and head of Fair.com, you're on a private company side, yeah. but you've also run a company that's been public. What's easier? Uh, what are the advantages of both? Well, I think if you're going to run a company at the size that we're operating today, you have to think about running it like a public company. The kinds of dollars that are involved, we've raised quite a bit of capital, both debt and equity, requires both transparency, a lot of discipline. So I don't think there's any difference between running a company at this scale, whether it's private or public. I will say you get to innovate a little bit better as a private company because you don't have to necessarily worry about the, the short-term effect of a decision one way or the other. You can really focus on the long-term benefit to your, your different uh, customers and what the product is going to do for them. And I think that's really the strongest benefit of being a privately held company. So when can we expect Fair.com to go public? Well, we're not even thinking about that right now. Um, but it's not for the sort of standard tech reason where they say, you know, I don't want to go public or we don't talk about it. We're going to have to be a public company at some point just because of the size of the dollars involved. We're really early, though. We've only had our product in the marketplace for less than two years. The business is growing very, very quickly. And I think that we run it today as if it's going to be a public company one day, but we don't have any internal goal and we have really patient capital. You have a partnership with Uber. They have plans potentially to file for an IPO. How does your partnership change if or when they do go public? Well, I think it's very important that um, Uber drivers are really the key to unlocking Uber's growth potential because long-term driver counts are really correlated to gross bookings and growth. So it is important that Uber has a, an ability to get its drivers on the road. It turns out that most rideshare drivers are really challenged when it comes to getting a car loan. So there needs to be a solution for that and I think that's where Fair is a really complementary partner. We love the partnership with Uber because Uber not only is everywhere but they're growing very, very quickly and so that means that we actually can partner with them to provide vehicles to their drivers. The partnership works very well when you're an Uber driver and you go into the app and you say you don't have a car, you're introduced to fare. We provide that solution for them. Taking a step back and just looking at more of a bird's eye view, how generally has the fundraising environment been for the tech world, for the car world, for your world? Uh, is there too much money chasing too few investments? 
I wouldn't say there's too much money chasing too few investments. I think what used to be a seed investment or what used to be a Series A has now moved up a little bit. I think there's more dollars being invested, but the kinds of companies that are getting these investments are actually game-changing businesses and they're very disruptive. And so while the dollars involved have gone up, that is for sure, I do think that the scale of these businesses is a lot bigger. So even though we're a very young company, for example, we've already got 20,000 plus drivers. We're operating in 35 major U.S. cities, almost 20 states, uh, 3 million installed users. So for us, that's not something that you really would have thought possible in sort of a you know, startup. And we're at this point a growth company, even at our young stage.